Welcome back to 1-800-GuitarLessons.com. My name is Stacy, and in this lesson, I want to introduce you to the parts of an acoustic guitar. First off, uh, why do we call it an acoustic guitar? Well, simply put, uh, we call it an acoustic guitar because we can play it and uh, generate sound without having to plug the guitar into an amplifier. An acoustic guitar generates sound by having steel strings that, when you play them, are amplified by the body of the guitar, which is also called a resonating chamber. So those, the strings resonate in here and then come back out and take on the sonic characteristics of uh, the wood that's on the top of the guitar. This allows you to basically take the instrument anywhere and be a one-man band, so to speak, and it really makes it convenient uh, to be able to share your music with friends, songwriting partners, crowds, the beach, wherever you choose to go, whoever you want to play for, you will have the ability to just open up the case and play. That being said, let's take a look at the various parts of the guitar so that you can be familiar with the instrument. We'll start with the body. The body, as I mentioned before, is where the vibration of your strings resonate to produce a warm, rich sound. You'll notice on the front of the acoustic we have a hole that sits just underneath uh, the strings uh, where you do your strumming. This is called the sound hole, and it's where uh, the actual sound that the strings produce exit the body of the guitar. If you look just below that area where the strings are anchored, we have the bridge of our guitar, which is this piece right here. Um, and the bridge is a wooden piece that houses our saddle, which is right here, and our bridge pins that secure our guitar strings to the body of the guitar. Attached to the bridge is this little white piece right here called the saddle, as I just mentioned. Usually made of plastic or bone, and its job is to raise the strings above the body and the fretboard of the guitar to make them playable. Now these little white pieces that you see right here at the bottom of where your guitar strings appear are called bridge pins, and they are what we use to secure the ball end of the guitar strings to the bridge. Now on most acoustic guitars, you'll see a plastic piece located below the sound hole right here. And this is called the pickguard. The one I have on my Martin is a tortoiseshell pickguard, but they come in several different colors and shapes. Its purpose is to protect your pick from scratching the body as you strum the guitar. The top piece of your guitar, which is this piece of wood right here, is called the soundboard, which is used to amplify the sound of your guitar. This one piece can drastically change or alter the tone of a guitar, whether you have cedar, spruce, or whatnot. The piece you see on my Martin is solid spruce, which is a great piece of wood that produces a warm tone that just gets better and better over time. I've had this guitar for 25 years and it just sounds better than ever. Now that isn't the only piece of wood that's used to project the sound. We also have the back, which is right here, and the sides, as mentioned before, they're made of a different type of wood. The guitar I'm playing here is a Martin D1R, and the R indicates that the back and sides that are used to reflect sound on this particular guitar is rosewood. So basically you hit the strings, the string bounces off the rosewood, comes back out and takes on the tonal characteristic of the solid piece of spruce. The last thing I want to show you on the body of the guitar is the strap button, which is right here, which is where you would attach a guitar strap. You can see a little better if I turn around like that. Mine actually is a, has been replaced with a, a pickup that also doubles as a strap button. Um, now, must, most all acoustics have a strap button on the back or the base of the guitar, but they don't always uh, come with one on the back of the guitar neck. So you sometimes have to have one installed as, um, as I did here. You can actually see it right there, okay? This allows me to attach a strap in the same way I would, uh, the way I'd, I'd, I'd uh, attach a strap to an electric guitar without having to tie a strap to the headstock, and it makes life a whole lot easier when you're playing live. The neck is the long, narrow part of the guitar that connects the headstock, which is right here, to the body of the guitar. On the front of the neck is what we call the fingerboard, which is where we use all of our non-strumming hands to play chords. On the top of the fingerboard, you'll notice two things. The first is these little metal pieces up and down the neck of the guitar. These are called frets, okay, and their job is to subdivide pitches of the guitar to allow us to make music, like you can hear it going up in pitch right here. and so on and so forth. It's important for you to know that although the frets are metal pieces themselves, we actually, as I've mentioned in other lessons, we actually just use the space between two frets to select a pitch. So if I were to say play the second fret on your sixth string, I would actually be talking about uh, the space in between your first and second fret. So there's our first fret, second fret. This is what we refer to as the second fret. The se second thing that you'll notice on the fingerboard are these little inlays that are placed um, at certain positions. These simply serve as guides to help you navigate the fretboard. Some guitars like this one additionally mirror those markers on the top of the fretboard so that you can see uh, if you're viewing from the top, which is very helpful in live situations. 
That brings us to this little small piece that is located be between the neck, so right here, and the headstock. So we're looking at this piece right here, and uh, that's called the nut of the guitar. It's usually, just like the saddle, made of plastic or bone. In this case, mine is made of, of, of bone. And its job is to guide the guitar strings through the little grooves to uh, their final location on the tuning post right here, okay, that you see on the headstock. And like the saddle, it's also raised just a little bit above the fretboard to keep your strings from fretting out or deadening the strings. You don't want them to sound like this. You want them to be nice and clear. Okay, so the distance from the neck of the guitar to the strings that allows uh, the strings to resonate or, or how high they are up right here is what's commonly referred to as the action of your guitar. And trust me, the better the action is, the better your guitar plays. This leads us to the headstock, which is at the very top part of our guitar. That's this piece right here, all right? And it's where our tuning pegs or our tuning machines, whatever you want to call them, are located. The tuning machines are where we wrap the end of our strings around and we can then grab them right here and uh, turn them uh, to raise or to correct pitch. And once the guitar is in tune, we can then make any tuning adjustments we'd need by uh, any adjustments we'd need to make by turning the pegs to the left or the right, uh, which would take the pitch of the instrument up or down, whatever it is that we're looking to do. The last and final piece of an acoustic that we need to talk about uh, is a piece that you really can't even see, and uh, that is the truss rod, which is a long metal piece that's located inside the neck of the guitar and its uh, purpose is to stabilize and adjust the curvature of the guitar's neck. So without this piece, your guitar neck would eventually give in to the pulling of the strings and simply warp. Over time, your guitar will need to be intonated in order to keep it in tune with itself, and the truss rod is what's used to do that along with a guitar tuner, uh, with adjustments being made by an Allen wrench. I'll caution you, though, to never touch this piece yourself. Uh, you get to it through the sound hole. It's at, at, you'll see the actual bar if you look through the sound hole. Uh, but don't try to, to touch this piece yourself unless you truly know what you're doing. I highly recommend taking your guitar to the local music store to have a professional make any adjustments that are necessary to keep your guitar in tune. That should bring you up to speed with the different parts of the acoustic and make it easy for you to talk shop with other musicians about the guitar. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've learned something. And as always, I'll see you in the next lesson.